Am I the jerk for telling my spouse that they're insecure? I have been struggling with my weight for a while and have tried dieting on and off but have never been motivated to stick to it. Lately my spouse and I have moved back to my hometown. I have had access to amazing medical care, all my friends, and some nostalgic places. With all of this, and access to medications for my autoimmune disorders, I have felt better than ever and more motivated to finally cut junk from my diet and start exercising more. This has never gone well in the past, but I've actually gotten to the point where I do not crave junk food anymore. I refuse to buy it and have even already lost 10 pounds. I am so happy to have gotten past the initial hurdle when it comes to eating more wholesome foods. My spouse asked why I was dieting again. I laughed nervously and told them honestly, I just really wanted to be able to fit into the rides at the theme park. They seemed horrified for some reason and told me that it was an extremely unhealthy reason to want to lose weight. I got upset and told them that it was not just that. I wanted to be more active and social overall. I told them I was tired of leaning on my chronic pain and fatigue and not being able to enjoy physical activities with my dearest friends. During the eclipse I had to miss out on an amazing hike and my spouse and I stayed behind. They told me that I should not want to lose weight like that because it would not make me any less disabled. They said I was delusional for thinking I would get better and falling into a societal beauty standards trap, and that I was making an unhealthy choice. They also told me that I was incredibly preachy whenever I started dieting. I am not trying to be. Nutrition science just happens to be something that absolutely fascinates me and I love researching and talking about it. I could do it for hours. I could spill all of my opinions on the food industry and nutrition. I just find it very fulfilling. I had no idea that I was being preachy. However, my feelings were hurt at that point. I do admit that I told them that in probably a less than sensitive way. I said that just because they are insecure about their own disabilities, they should not project onto me and drag me down with them. I said that I do not have to eat the same junk they do, and I am allowed to make my own choices as for what to do about my body. I apologized for sounding preachy and explained what I did above, but I would not be sorry for using whatever made me happy to stay motivated and to have the hope that losing some weight will help at least a little with my disabilities. Was I a total jerk about all of this? I am really frustrated and wondering if they were right about my motivations being for the wrong reasons. I am also wondering if I went too far in what I said or if I was at least a little justified. You are not the jerk, you're being sabotaged, and it sounds like a toxic relationship where significant others do this because they fear you'll leave them once you become confident. Good partners support each other and you deserve someone who encourages your healthy choices, not someone who wants you unhealthy and housebound. This is the point where couples counseling has to occur, and if things don't improve, you need to leave and save yourself. Your diet and exercise journey is for you, and while it's great to have support, don't let anyone diminish your efforts or make it about their insecurities. Am I the jerk for calling out my parent for inviting their partner to our parent-child bonding time? For context, this is a conversation we have had a couple of times and is a sensitive subject between my mother, who is 43 years old, and me, who is 17 years old. I just asked if we could watch the movie Rushmore because it is very important to me as I watch it for comfort. On Monday, I asked if we could watch it on Wednesday since she previously mentioned she was probably going to see her boyfriend, Jason, who was 44 years old, on Tuesday night. It sounded like a plan, so I left the room. When I came back she suggested, how about if Jason comes over here tomorrow night, we watch the movie together? That would be a good way for you two to spend some time together. My response was, yeah, what a great time bonding while sitting quietly in the same room together for 90 minutes. She did not like that, but seriously, let's be real. This was an issue for me for two reasons. The lesser reason is that I would not be able to sit on the couch. My mother is not going to make her boyfriend sit on the awkward little seat by the trash, and I sure as hell am not going to share the couch with him. I have absolutely nothing against this man. He is nice and makes my mother happy, and that is what matters. However, I will not be uncomfortable like that in my own home. I am not sitting in that awkward seat for 90 minutes. The second reason is harder to explain. To sum it up, this movie is very important to me, and watching it in such a situation would taint the experience. Therefore, I do not want to partake. This same situation happened twice before when my mother invited her boyfriend to see a movie that meant something to me, and I was not okay with it. She tried to invite him to see the Charlie Day movie with us, and I was against it, especially since it would be my first time watching it, and that experience means something to me. She also invited him to watch the newest Wes Anderson movie with us last summer, and again, I refused. I knew that movie would be important to me, and thus my first time watching it would be too. I was correct in both those instances. After she mentioned Jason watching Rushmore with us, I made my hilarious and totally lighthearted joke and changed the subject. Now I am wondering if I should bring it up again or not worry about it. Am I the asshole? In my opinion, you have done nothing wrong here because you dealt with the situation the best you could while trying not to hurt your mom. But you need to tell your mom exactly how important these experiences are to you and why you didn't want Jason there. If she doesn't know, she can't act in a way that is comfortable for you and might keep insisting. It's totally fair to want one-on-one -on -one time with your mother doing something fun together. Am I the jerk for wanting my spouse to bag their luggage after getting bed bugs at a hotel? 
My husband, who is 44 years old, and I, who am 39 years old, have been married for 16 years, and we have been together for 20 years. We have two children, an 11-year-old son and a 7-year-old daughter. My son has severe ADHD and gives us a run for our money. My husband travels for work a lot. Every few weeks he is gone for anywhere from 1 to 5 or more weeks. Sometimes this travel falls back to back. It is part of his job. It is hard, but it is what it is. I am often basically a single mother. I also work, and I work in the evenings. I do not get home until 10 or 11 at night, and then I am always up at 6.30 in the morning with the kids. We make do with babysitters. We have no family nearby, but my mother will come in for a week at a time when my husband has a lot of travel to help out. Bless her. We live in New York City. During this last travel my husband unfortunately had a pretty bad experience with bed bugs in his hotel room. Honestly I am shocked it has never happened before. He was completely eaten. The hotel moved his room and dry cleaned his luggage and clothing. I am terrified of bed bugs. It is a horror. I feel so bad this happened to my husband. I did a lot of research and everything I read said to bag his stuff when he gets back, let it sit for a month, then retreat. Cross contamination between rooms is common in hotels. I told him when he got home I wanted him to bag everything just in case. He had to take a red eye home this past week. He was tired and cranky. I happened to be outside in the front gardening when he got in, and before he went inside with his luggage, I insisted he bag it all. He got pissed off. He argued with me that it was unnecessary, and he was tired, and he did not want to do it. I still insisted. He threw his hands up, started slamming his belongings and being an absolute jerk. He slammed his luggage into some garbage bags, threw them down in our front foyer, and muttered under his breath. Great, I'm home. Time to shut up and do what I'm told. I absolutely lost it. I run myself ragged taking care of our family and our home, often doing it all when he is gone. If we ever got a bed bug infestation, it would be a nightmare, especially if he was out of town again and I had to deal with it solo. I screamed. I threw a piece of watermelon at the wall. I told him to fuck off and not talk to me again, then I had to go to work. I have not talked to him since. I am sleeping in another room. I have to run a tight ship to get everything done, to get my kids everywhere they need to be. My kids are kids, they can be tough. When my husband gets home, I need a partner to help me and to keep our family safe, not a petulant teenager. I really do not want to talk to him until he apologizes, which he has not. I refuse to be the first to extend the olive branch. I always am, but I am too mad this time. So, am I the asshole? Nothing you've done here makes me think you are the jerk here. Bed bugs are a nightmare. They spread easily and can take months to get rid of, sometimes even requiring new mattresses and furniture. Your husband should have stripped at the door, bagged his clothes, and immediately showered off. It's a lot easier for him to wing it when you're the one who has to deal with the fallout, but hopefully, he'll recognize how hard an infestation would be on your family. Would I be the asshole for not letting my parent and their partner see my child at birth? For context, my mother, who is 49 years old, has been with her current boyfriend, who is also 49 years old, since 2009. Let's call him Brian. Brian and I never hit it off, as I've always gotten weird vibes from him. He has zero social cues and doesn't take the time to use common sense. He obviously never liked me, and I can 100% tell that he finds me annoying or whatever. The feelings are mutual on this one. Last summer, my mother opened a chip stand, and my mother, Brian and I were the only employees. I waited for him in the rain because I couldn't go back in since my boyfriend left with the apartment complex keys. I saw him drive by about two minutes after going out. I thought he was going to my apartment as it's on the same road. My boyfriend and I have our own apartments, but I stay more at his place than mine. I waited 5 minutes, and nothing happened. My apartment was only a 2 minute drive from where I was. He finally called, asking if I was home. I said that I was at my boyfriend's place, and he said he was on his way. Another 5 minutes went by, and he still wasn't there. 10 minutes later, he arrived. By this point I was soaked and irritated. He told me that he was parked playing Pokemon Go. I am a Pokemon Go player too, but that really pissed me off. When we got there, my mother immediately read my expression and asked me what was wrong and why I was all wet. I told her that I had to wait on Brian for nearly 20 minutes outside because he decided to go play Pokemon Go. She got upset at him, and he started yelling, saying he never took that long and that I was exaggerating. I called bullshit, and he popped off, telling my mother words that will always ring in the back of my mind. I told you I never wanted her in my life. If that's how you feel, go ahead. Anyways, I found out on Wednesday that I am pregnant and haven't told my mother yet. I don't really want to because when my little sister announced her pregnancy, my mother begged her not to tell anyone. The second my sister left, she told nearly everyone who stopped by that she was going to be a grandmother again. My other sister has four kids. When my little sister gave birth, it was a total mess. My mother told everyone that it was parents only no siblings, although my sister is an adult herself. My mother tried her best to keep us away from the hospital and caused a whole scene when my two siblings still went with our biological father. I'm not a petty person, I just like to feed people their medicine. Do stupid things, and it'll come back to you. And if anyone is wondering, yes, she pulled similar things with my older sister's births. 
I don't really plan on telling her. I do however, plan on telling her that I want my siblings there and my biological father. I do not want her to cause a scene and have everyone on edge. I do not plan on letting Brian near my child at all, or in my child's life for that matter. If he doesn't want me in his life, why let him be in my child's life? Would I be the asshole? Tell the hospital to ban mom and the boyfriend, and let everyone know they can visit, but that you aren't having mom and Mr. Pogo there. Call everyone else after you've had a chance to catch your breath and get some rest, so you have the privacy and bonding time you need with your newborn. You are the boss now, and people who don't respect your wishes are no longer invited until they agree to respect them. Being family doesn't mean anyone has the right to be included. Grandparenting is a privilege, not a right. Am I the jerk for telling them I don't want to be responsible for making them feel better? My husband, 38 years old, and I, 33 years old, are celebrating our 10-year anniversary in Italy. Traveling is our thing, and we try to take at least one overseas trip a year. The only issue is that my immune system is weak, and something usually comes up on these trips. Once, it was seasonal allergies that got really bad. Another time, it was an extremely painful urinary tract infection. Nothing that a quick pharmacy trip can't fix, but it still happens almost every time. I eat extremely healthily, stay active, and do everything I can to keep my body at its peak. I also pack a little first aid kit of things I might need on the trip so that I can fix anything quickly. This trip I'm the sickest I've been in years. Before the flight was even done, I was vomiting everything up, including water. That stopped, but I was still nauseous. I took tablets to help with the nausea, and it helped a little, but I still felt too sick to eat. After a few days the nausea went away but was replaced by a chest cough. I took Dayquil, and that mostly helped. Now that the cough has faded, the nausea is coming back, though without vomiting. In the past, my husband has told me that my inability to stay healthy ruins trips for him. He expresses how inconvenient it is when I get sick at home, but he gets extra upset when it's during a trip. I've developed contamination obsessive compulsive disorder as a result of his constant judgment of my immune system. When traveling I always encourage him to go out, enjoy the city, and do planned events even if I can't, but he tells me it's not fun on his own. This would be sweet if he wasn't so vocal about how I'm ruining vacations for him. Italy is his dream trip. I tried to keep up so he could have fun. I tried very hard. I tried not to talk about how sick I felt because he would get all quiet and distant if I did. I tried to make sure we went to all the museums and restaurants he had planned, even if I couldn't eat anything. But today, I finally told him I needed to sit in the hotel room and rest. As expected, he got quiet and distant. He assured me that he's not mad at me for being sick, but he's still sad that he can't enjoy his vacation because he's too worried about my well-being. I asked if he could please order us room service since he didn't want to go out to the city for his meal, and he said he can't because he has social anxiety. He has literally never said this in the 12 years we've known each other. He moped silently on his phone while I ordered us food. I told him that it sucks that he gets all distant and visibly upset when I'm sick, and when I finally ask for help, he tells me no. I feel like I have to put my own health on hold to take care of his emotions first. He told me I was mean for saying I didn't want to take care of his emotions, and he's allowed to be sad. Am I the asshole for feeling like, at the very least, I shouldn't have to make him feel better about me being sick? Okay, then we shouldn't take trips together. It's literally not something that can be controlled, and it's not fair to blame one person for unavoidable illness. When you get sick you miss out on everything you want to do, while your husband still has a choice. It's disturbing that he blames you for something outside of your control, and maybe this is worth discussing with a therapist. Am I the jerk for not helping my partner with homework whenever they want or need? My boyfriend is currently in college. I graduated five years ago. He is actually older than I am. Throughout our two-year relationship, I have been heavily integrated into his schooling. He needed help with math homework, and since I got my bachelor's degree in math, it was natural for me to offer help. I want to see him succeed. Over time, help with math grew into more. I began helping with other subjects, taking online quizzes, making presentations, and even just being there because he says he cannot focus when I am not present. I want to be fair and add that for the vast majority of this I am not just allowing him to cheat. I am genuinely trying to teach him, and he is genuinely trying to learn. We both live separately with family, so, doing day-long study sessions is not ideal when I have my own chores like laundry and cleaning. The level of involvement became too much for me to continuously provide. Due to other things in the relationship, we are somewhat in a limbo stage. I expressed that I did not think it would be a good idea to keep helping him during our break, which I swore he agreed to. However, as exams began to roll around, it became an issue. He says that I never asked to not help him, and that it is really disappointing that I do not want to. He questions if my wanting him to succeed is genuine. So I started helping him in ways I could and felt comfortable with. I just got a call from him, asking if I was coming over tonight to keep him company while he studies for another subject. He pretty much did not study at all today or yesterday, because I was not there. He also needs math help before an exam in three days, even though I just helped him study for an exam three days ago. I said I might just stay home and get an early start tomorrow to give him a better chance of being able to help him study then. He asked if I can help him every day until the exam, 
I said no because I work a full-time job. I can try two of the days. He said, you can just not help me and I will fail. It got a little heated because I told him not to guilt trip me as it is adding stress to my plate. He said I am stressing myself out because his school is done in three days and then he will be on break for a full two months. This is all just getting so unpleasant to be honest. Am I the asshole? Is he the asshole? Are we both assholes? You are not the jerk. He's clearly using controlling behaviors, and this type of behavior only gets worse. For your own sanity, stepping back from any further tutoring is a good idea. This has evolved from being supportive into being a crutch, and he needs to learn to study on his own. Is this really what you want? Someone who shamelessly uses weaponized incompetence to make you carry their full weight? Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist in the description.